something that we've learned about bringing people onto our team is that they really need to have that entrepreneurial spirit. Even if they're not necessarily the founders, it is important because we are, you know, the, we're not necessarily a startup anymore, but we have that startup mentality where we wear many hats and it is a fast paced company. So the people that come on really need to be scrappy, realize that they may have to be doing something that they necessarily didn't think they would be doing or that they believe might be below their pay grade. Um, but that's just unfortunately being in a startup situation, that's what you have to you have to do. And again, it's people who believe in the vision, who really want to um, move a brand forward. And we always say we have a no jerk policy. So we, we want people to have fun. We want people to work with people they like. Welcome to Grow Think Tank. This is the one and only place where you will get insight from the founders and the CEOs of the fastest growing privately held companies. I am the host. My name is Gene Hammett. I help leaders and their teams navigate the defining moments of their growth. Are you ready to grow? Today we look at the real people behind the brand and how that creates growth and opportunity for companies. This is at your company and other companies, but our special guest today is the co-founder and CEO of Brutus Broth, which is a, a product for dogs. It's, is it, you think it's bone broth for dogs. It really is amazing. And uh, I talked with Sel Sue Deligan about uh, the people behind the brand and you know how do you find those people? How do you activate them? And what she's really looking for, I love this, this concept is an entrepreneurial spirit. And so you, if you're curious about what that is and how she uses it to get the best people on the team and empower them to move forward, to build the brand and, and have people that are aligned with the mission and the vision of the company, that's what we talk about today in this conversation. So the people behind the brand. Now, before we jump into the interview, my name is Gene Hammett. I'm an executive coach. We do leadership development for fast growth companies. We actually have worked with more Inc. 5000 level companies than anyone out there, uh, leadership development wise. And it really is something we're proud of. We understand the chaos and the challenge of growth. And we want to help you continue to grow, to continue to put the systems and, and structure in place, whether that be people or leadership. One of the tools we use is called the Leadership Effectiveness Evaluation. It's a very unique proprietary tool to the work we do. We're going to bring it forward from paying clients to you if you're interested and in seeing where you stand as a leader. How do you measure leadership across your company? Well, we're going to give you the tools behind it. It's a one-on-one -on -one conversation with me. It's about 30 minutes. And we will walk through this and you will score yourself in different areas and we will prioritize those and help you plan out how to address the things that you want to work on as your company has continued to grow. And it changes over time. Sometimes we have things working and, and we have to, and they break down as we grow and we have to you know, continuously redo this. But the first one, this leadership effectiveness evaluation, just go to genehammett.com, schedule your call today, and you can get that for absolutely free. Just tell me that you heard about it on the podcast. GeneHammett.com, schedule your call. It's the Leadership Effectiveness Evaluation. It'll give you insight into your leadership across the company and give you a plan to move forward. All in about 30 minutes with me. Now, here's the interview with Sue. Sue, how are you? Good, thank you, Gene. How are you? Fantastic. We have a great episode planned. I, before we dive into that, I'd really love for you to tell us about your business. Tell us about Brutus Broth. Sure. Brutus Broth uh, was founded uh, based on my rescue dog, Brutus. So Brutus, I had him since 2005. He lived a long and healthy life until he was about 13 and a half. He was 135 pounds. So he's a big boy. Um, I fed him bone broth his whole life. And so as he got older and exceeded his life expectancy, people would ask where I was getting bone broth and including our veterinarian and I was making it. And if you know anything about bone broth, it's really difficult to make. It takes a long time. And so um, 2016, sitting around the Thanksgiving dinner table, my sister-in-law asked, no offense, how is Brutus still kicking? And I said, bone broth. And my brother who owned a food company at the time asked where I got it. And I, again, told him I made it at home. He said, you should bring it to market. So started looking at the market, realized that there wasn't really bone broth out there yet. It was getting really popular with human um, in the human marketplace. And as we know, pet typically uh, follows human trends. And I 
partnered with my sister. She was living in Hawaii at the time I was on the East Coast and said, what do you think of this idea? We spent about a year doing market research plus, um, you know, uh, partnering with different manufacturers, going through the R&D process. We launched in May of 2018. And we did a beta test in 165 stores in the Northeast. And the reason why we did a beta test was because we didn't really know if this concept would work. We didn't know if people would understand bone broth for dogs. And um, we got a lot of great data, a lot of customer feedback, and we decided to continue to grow, add products in 2020, beginning of 2020, we did our national launch. And today we are in almost 10,000 stores nationwide. Incredible story. Love the connection. And I, I know that we talked about your, your dogs now, and I have, I'm a dog person, so I really can resonate with this. Um, what's been the hardest part of building a brand for, for dogs? Well, I, you know, th- being in the pet industry was, um, it's new for my sister and I. So I, prior to Brutus Broth, I actually had a dairy company. So another thing that I knew nothing about, but I learned a lot about manufacturing, logistics, all that great stuff, which helped me launch Brutus Broth. But a lot of people don't understand or know that pet is regulated state by state. So I think for us, that was the hardest thing, um, launching a product and realizing that all 50 states had to approve your packaging and your labeling. Um, and so we learned a lot along the way. It was um, it was interesting. One more question on the business you guys are probably really connected with the the pet community, but you also give back. Tell us a little bit more about how your company gives back. Yeah. So Brutus was a rescue dog. We had um, rescued him from a high kill shelter. So the, the whole idea for us was to nourish your pet while giving back to the community. Um, and, you know, I said, Brutus gave us so much love. It's just his legacy is to give back. Um, we also believe truly, if you start a business today and don't have some sort of social platform or, um, you know, philanthropic arm, you're missing the point. People want to, um, people really want to support businesses that give back. And so we give back to over 150 organizations nationwide. Um, again, it can be anything from donating product to donating, um, funds. Uh, we partner with a lot of organizations to do events and sponsor events. So um, that's a really important aspect to, for us. So I'm assuming that Kim is your sister. Yes. Mm-hmm. I have done some research on your website. And I also am assuming that you guys have attracted the people that work on the team because it's not just you two, you know, making all this work and making 10,000 stores happen. Uh, that There's a there's a people behind the brand. So tell me a little bit about why they come to work with you guys. Yeah. So I have to say it was just us two for a long time until about the end of 2019. (laughs) Um, And we hired a CFO, COO. He actually came to us. He had a pet food um, or pet store um, in Colorado. So he had interest in the pet industry. Um, He came to us and he worked with us until um, earlier this year where we just kind of grew too, too much for him. We then at that time started bringing on some employees. So now we have about 10 employees, um, both full-time and part-time, which uh, for a lot of people seems very small for us. It seems big because it was just a two to three of us. And I think, you know, Something that we've learned about bringing people onto our team is that they really need to have that entrepreneurial spirit. Even if they're not necessarily the founders, it is important because we are, you know, the we're not necessarily a startup anymore, but we have that startup mentality where we wear many hats and it is a fast paced company. So the people that come on really need to be scrappy, realize that they may have to be doing something that they necessarily didn't think they would be doing or that they believe might be below their pay grade. Um, But that's just unfortunately being in a startup situation. That's what you have to, you have to do. And again, it's people who believe in the vision, who really want to um, move a brand forward. And we always say we have a no jerk policy. So we, we want people to have fun. We want people to work with people they like. 
I love the fact that you talk about the entrepreneurial spirit. I have uh, run across this quite often in my work. In fact, I've given a speech about ownership. And underneath that is where people taking ownership and feel like owners is that entrepreneurial spirit inside of companies. My curiosity is how do you frame that for a potential hire? When you're looking for someone with that entrepreneurial spirit, how do you put that into words so that they want to come aboard and, and really join your mission and vision? Yeah. So it's interesting that you asked the question because I had an interview this morning for someone that we're bringing on in the operations. And he he asked me, you know, how can I fit into your team and how, how do you see me as part of um, the leadership team? And I think for us, it is about being collaborative. I think that is such an important word to use when you talk to people that we we see our company and our team as being a collaboration. We don't see it as a hierarchy. I always tell people that you don't work for me, we work together. And I say that to everyone that comes on um, because I truly believe it. I truly believe that we're all moving forward towards a common goal. And I want our team, regardless of title, to walk into a store and look at our product and say, I had something to do with that. That's something that I'm proud of. This product was um, a labor of my love. And it's it's so important for everyone to feel that that's, that's part of you know what they've done. Now, Sue just talked about the entrepreneurial spirit, which I love this conversation. You want to hire people who think for themselves, who see things, and they're proactive, just like you do as an owner. In fact, I believe you want people to feel a sense of ownership, even if they don't have the financial tools. Now, I've mapped this out into six different areas. You can get those areas for me. All you have to do is email me, gene at genehammett.com. I don't have a, a download for you. I'm not going to collect your email address and put it on anything. But if you're curious about the six aspects or principles of people feeling like owners and really, you know, uh, nurturing that entrepreneur spirit in people, then you want to make sure you get that. Just send me the email and ask for the, the six principles of ownership and I'll give it to you for free. Now back to Sue. You know, you use the word feel and I use that quite often. I think I just used it a minute ago, but the feeling that they've done something real, you have a physical product and, and it's, uh -huh. it is easier with a physical product. But I know that there's such, there's something that drives in me when I see the benefit that we make with clients and your people have a product that goes into shelves and, and people probably send you letters and things from their dogs. Yeah. <laughs> Tell them how, you know, they're, they're living a longer life because of this. Like how was, how do you tell those stories across the company to keep it fresh and keep it going? Because I feel like we forget to tell these stories of the impact we make. How do you do it? Yeah, you know, it is funny that you say that because I have mentioned that sometimes we forget to celebrate the wins. And sometimes you're in the weeds and the trenches all the time that you do forget. And there are times where I forget to do it. And I have to have people remind me that there is, you know, this greater good that we're working towards. And so I think for our team it is sharing those stories. We do get a lot of emails and pictures. And, you know, when I get something from a customer and Kim and I answer every customer email or inquiry, um, I'll send it to the team and say, look at, you know, look at this dog, look what we've done for him. Um, and I think that keeps people going. We also... You know, we want to have fun too with this with this company, and uh, we try to. It's hard being remote. You know, COVID. Um, there's a couple things with with being remote is we can have people from across the country, but then you're not together, so you're not celebrating those wins. We try to get together a few times a year um, to to celebrate together and be together, and not just working. I. I love all of the things we're talking about here. We, we've been really coming here to, to talk about you know, the people behind the brand. What do you think really makes up the people behind the brand and makes you guys so successful to grow as fast as you have? Yeah, I think it's being authentic. I think Kim and I, we always say it's about relationships. So it's not just relationships with the people who work with us. It's not just the relationships with the retailers, and but it's also relationships with the customers. I think people now... They're so savvy. I mean, consumers today are so savvy. They want to support brands that, um, you know, have real people behind them. We always say that Brutus Broth was invented in the 
kitchen and not the boardroom. You know, we're competing against really big companies that um, just churn out products from a boardroom because it's easy. Um, and I think everyone on our team really uh, has that, you know, they've they've been a part of the quote unquote kitchen, you know, they've been a part of what we're, what we're doing. And I think for us, it is showing um, our consumer that we're real people. I'd love to know more about your leadership principles, Sue. How do you lead a team? It's a small team, but you have so much going on. What are the things that really you center on as a leader? I think it's surrounding yourself with good, smart people. I always say that I, I'm the first to admit that I don't know everything. Um, you know, when I first started my other company, I had hired this salesman who had 30 plus years experience. I was in my early 30s. The first time I met him was on a sales call and I met him the evening before at the hotel bar. And he looked at me and said, you probably could be younger than my daughter. And he was really condescending and cold and wouldn't let me speak in the meeting the next day. And I sat down with him after that meeting and I said, look, I didn't hire you because I thought I knew everything and that I knew more than you. I hired you because you're the best sales guy and I can learn something from you. And when we dissolved that company 18 months later, he called me and said, if you ever start another company, I'd love to come work with you. And to me, that meant a lot. I mean, it showed that he went from really being, you know, standoffish to me to respecting me and seeing me as a leader that he would want to work with down the road. So um, I think it's it's empowering our employees and letting them know that their, um, you know, everything that they bring to the table is valuable to us and to me. Now, Sue just talked about empowering employees. I think a lot of people don't really understand what empowerment is. Empowerment truly is a two-way street. You're trusting them enough to give them things to do, give them areas to own, whether it be metrics, whether it be challenges that they're overcoming, or maybe it's a revamp of a process or innovation. And you're asking them to think for themselves and you don't want to cross the line and telling them how to do it. it. Can you brainstorm and collaborate together? Absolutely. But give them a shot first, really empower them to come up with their, use their own creativity, see where they stand. And then coach and support them through that as much as you can before you jump in and say, let me do it for you. I do this with my team. I want you to really see the power of that because it creates more confident people who are willing to, to make decisions. It creates people who are more engaged with the work and more fulfilled. And that is very important as companies grow. Back to Sue. Part of my job here is to have hundreds of interviews with people just like you, Sue, and I codify it. Maybe it's the engineer in me, and maybe it's just looking for patterns, but that entrepreneurial spirit and empowerment go hand in hand. I know you get it because you can't expect someone to be an entrepreneur inside your company and not empower them to make decisions and 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 really try to, to solve problems, maybe even before that they're real problems. Um, when you're looking and hiring people, not that I need to know the secret sauce, but is there any special interview question that gets you to tune in to, is this person a good fit for our company? I think it's really, um, you know, I think it's really important for me to understand their history, but then where they want to go. I think, you know, it, it seems so basic, but it really is, you know, what have you done in the past and what do you want to do? What is something that you are missing in your current role that you want in your next role? I think that's important for me to understand what they're looking for, because if it's not going to be a fit for what we can offer them, then I wouldn't want to bring them on. And so it is important to understand, you know, for example, this gentleman we interviewed this morning, he, everything that he's looking for is kind of what we are, you know, building a brand, seeing something come to life. And um, he was missing that in his current role and, and working with a small scrappy team that he can have a big voice and um, you know, we we had a gentleman that worked for us. And the thing that he always said to, to me was, it's your company, it's your decision. And I hated that. I hated that. I said, mm -hmm. but we hired you because I think you're a smart guy. And I, I want to hear your, your voice. I, and that's one thing I tell people, I want to hear your voice. You come to the table. And we say that even to interns, we have college kids who are summer interns. I, the first day I talk to them, I always say, if you guys have an idea or 
or any thoughts on things that we need to change or things we could do better, we want to hear it. I don't, it doesn't matter if you're in college and 20 years old, I want to hear it. I look for those patterns and you just replayed another one. There's a, there's a factor behind this entrepreneur spirit that you're talking about. And it's people that feel included mm -hmm. will share more and you asking them to hear their voice. That's means you value them and they, they go away knowing that they feel valued and they are willing mm -hmm. to speak up. And yeah. I, have enjoyed our conversation. And I don't know if there's anything that's missing from this, because I really feel like we've really talked about the people side of your business really well. Do you feel like there's anything that we need to bring to light before we wrap up today's call? Yeah, I think, I mean, for me, again, it's always, and this is just um, something I always think about in the back of my head, just a couple of quick little stories. Um, one is, you know, my father was an entrepreneur. He um, definitely had his successes and his downfalls and successes. And one thing he always said to me when I was growing up is that you never treat someone begging on the street differently than you would treat the CEO of a company. And I believe that wholeheartedly. And I saw that in him. He always treated, regardless of title, he treated everyone the same. Um, you know, I think that it's, it is important that you um, respect everyone and they will in return respect you and, and be a part of what you're growing. Um, and an, another one really quick is the flip side of that is I had my first, one of my first bosses when I was started in the corporate world, um, she was, she was a terrible person. You know, she would floss her teeth while she talked to you and she would call people names and meetings and degrade them. And I vowed to never be that person. And she always, I know she thought that she had to have this really strong female personality because she was leading the company and everyone besides myself was a man that worked for her. And she was really, um, it was, it was hard to watch and I didn't stay very long and not a lot of people stayed. And I vowed I would never be a boss or a CEO that treated people like that. Well, those are great pieces to, to put an end to this conversation about leadership and about, you know, the people behind the brand. And it really does, you know, kind of resemble why you are such a good leader, treating everyone with respect, hearing their voice, and and just everything you've said today really aligns to kind of the leader you are. And I know that translates into the success that the brand is having and the company's having. So that's the reason why we tell these stories. I really appreciate you being here, sharing your wisdom. Yeah. Thank you for having me. It was really fun. Wow. What a great conversation with Sue about the people behind the brand and what that does for her company, how that translates into growth and how she manages it all through her leadership principles and style. I enjoyed today's conversation with her. I'm, I'm really a big fan of this brand. Uh, I do want to buy it for my dogs. Uh, hopefully you will give it a try too. If you're interested in uh, you know, what Bronboth does for, for your canines, but the real core of today's message was about people and about leading people, hiring smart people, you know, finding those that have that entrepreneur spirit that are willing to make decisions. All of that was unpacked in today's episode. Now, if you find that you want to grow your leadership, you want to address some, some issues that are going on, and you're not quite sure what to do next, here's the chance where you can get on the phone with me and talk about it. We can use the leadership effectiveness evaluation as a starting point, or we can just dive in and talk about what's going on in your company and see how to go from there. Just go to genehammond.com and schedule your call. All that being said, when you think of leadership and you think of growth, think of Growth Think Tank. As always, think of courage. We'll see you next time.